International support for democracy and human rights is under fire. After decades of expansion of this work following the end of the Cold War, when international aid providers were finding doors opening to them all around the world, these days the opposite is happening. Doors are closing. We see it in high visibility cases like Russia, where President Putin has pushed back hard against international efforts to support democracy in Russia. But it's not just Russia, and it's not just Venezuela, and a few cases that have made the news. In more than 50 countries around the world in the last 10 years, governments have passed legal restrictions to make it harder for outsiders to provide aid for civil society. Not just civil society support is under fire, sometimes it's pushback against international election observing, pushback against political party support. So we've gone from doors opening to doors closing around the world. Why is this happening? Well, in some ways it has to do with some very broad trends in international politics that are about the relativization of power in the world, the fact that the United States and Europe, the main actors supporting democracy and human rights, don't have the power that they once had, and people on the other side of the equation, those who've been receiving this kind of attention and support, are pushing back and saying, wait a minute, we don't want to sort of allow you to come in and do whatever you want. We want to renegotiate the deal over this kind of assistance. In a sense, renegotiate the boundaries of sovereignty. This isn't an era of the end of sovereignty. It's the era of rebuilding sovereignty in many places. In addition, there are some other specific causes, in some cases technology, which allows people to move so much more easily across borders with their ideas and, in a sense, with their efforts to persuade others to do things, is unsettling governments around the world. And they're saying, you know, not just we want to reconstruct the Internet uh, in ways that protect us, we want to keep foreigners out uh, in other domains as well. There's going to be no single thing that, that stops or reverses this trend towards pushback against democracy and rights support. The causes are deep. This is the new normal for this kind of assistance. It's not just some bump in the road. But Western governments, aid providers, policymakers, non-governmental organizations have found some things are more effective and they need to keep doing better at them. We need to get smarter and sharper in the pushback against bad NGO laws. When NGO laws are being considered by a parliament in another country that would be very restrictive, people on this side need to get organized quickly, push back in smart ways against such laws. In addition, we need to get smarter about how to provide this assistance that doesn't put our partners in danger. Sometimes this means providing what we call protective technology for NGO partners in other countries. Sometimes it means operating more at a distance, using technology in smart ways that allow us to carry out assistance programs in non-traditional forms that can help sort of lower the concerns over sovereignty but be more effective. And finally, the multilateral sphere is also important. The norm for a right to association or freedom of association in the world is very important and is attached to these issues because that can include and some of the more expansive conceptions of it have pushed for the idea that this means that civil society actors in other countries can access funding outside the borders as part of their right for freedom of association.